The cruise lines argue we should always do the excursions because they're convenient, easy to book, include the must-see sites, the ship will wait for us if the cruise line excursion is delayed, and they've screened all the tour operators. But as I will explain, I actually don't think these are good reasons because it also, by the way, makes it way more costly as a way to explore the ports. However, while I prefer to self-explore ports, there are a few times when I absolutely will go on cruise line excursions, having learned some lessons the hard way, as you will hear. By the way, if you're new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge, and I'm making it easy and fun to do cruising right, including when to take a cruise line excursion and when not to. The first key thing I ask about any destination or any port I'm going to is how safe is it? Most cruise ports are pretty safe, but if I have even the slightest doubt, I stick 100% with the cruise line. The most extreme example of that I can think of recently was going to Egypt on a Nile river cruise. Now, I knew that Egypt has a reputation of being relatively unsafe. There's been uh, you know, political unrest. There's been stories of crime on tourists uh, being aggressively hassled by vendors, kind of twitchy police and army who've been known to arrest people, taking you know, photos that they deem suspicious, harassment of some travelers, including women and LGBT travelers. So a whole bunch of stuff that makes it feel perhaps less safe. So for that trip, I absolutely stayed within the cruise control bubble the whole time, and I did every single tour with the cruise line and no self-exploring. But asking the question applies just as much on any cruise anywhere. Just because a cruise calls into a country or port, I never assume that automatically means it's safe to do so. So for example, several Caribbean islands that I'm due to go on a cruise early next year have reputations for being unsafe, like Jamaica. For example, with Jamaica, at the time I record this, the US State Department has literally just raised its warning level against traveling there due to a crime surge. Now that may then shift downwards, but also at the moment there are unsafe protests going on in Panama. Uh, again, at the time I'm making this, another place that I'm due to call on. Now, so in those places, if anything's going on, any alerts, I will look at doing cruise line excursions in all those places. Now, of course, by the time I go, things might have changed, so I constantly check the latest State Department or UK Foreign Office advice, really close to going, and if there are any issues giving me any doubt in my mind, I book cruise excursions. There is, though, another part to the how safe is it question. For example, when I go to Alaska, the Norwegian fjords, or places with majestic scenery or glaciers, I love going on helicopter rides. In Alaska, up onto glaciers to walk or sledge with dogs. In Norway, to see the huge mountains and the beautiful mountaintop lakes. Now, these are really, really costly, but also I see them as high-risk activities. So I always book cruise line tours because I want to make sure that they're well-screened and really well verified. Now, this decision was reinforced for me when I was doing a helicopter tour on a Disney Magic Norway cruise. So I was talking to the pilots and I discovered that the line only allow certain pilots from that company that have over a certain amount of flying hours to actually be used on their tours. In the back of my mind, this also reinforced the the news about a terrible accident in Misty Fjords near Ketchikan, Alaska a few years back when five Holland America New Amsterdam passengers had booked their own less costly fly plane tour, but unfortunately that crashed with the loss of their life and that of the pilot. I know a cruise line excursion is not a guarantee of 100% safety when doing riskier activities, but I feel it does reduce the risk for me. I feel that anyway. So if I'm doing anything high value and high risk like those, or even an ATV or zip lines and so on, I do tend to book the cruise line screened provider tours. Also, as I discovered, if I have any issues or problems with costly trips like that, I then have a very strong leverage for getting that resolved by the cruise line. So for example, I've been refunded recently for half of a long cycling excursion that was pretty costly by a cruise line in Marseille because I felt it just was not up to their advertised standards and what they'd promised. So anytime I have the slightest question either about safety of the place or even the activity in my mind, I will always book the cruise line excursion and I'll stay within that bubble. But there is another more pragmatic issue that determines it too. The next one actually is the most frequent reason that I book a cruise line excursion, and that is when the port is nowhere near the main attraction or the city. Now, this is especially the case when I'm cruising in Europe, South America, and Asia, because 
many, many, many of the headline and must-see cities and places are actually a long way away from the port. So for example, I'm just back from a Western Mediterranean cruise on Norwegian Viva, and three of the ports we called on you know, fitted into this definition. Rome was a good hour, at least from the port of Civitavecchia. Florence and Pisa were uh, an hour, an hour and a half from the port of Livorno, and Seville was also an hour and a half away from Cadiz, where we were docked. Now, my cruise before that was on Regent Explorer, and the must Kyoto was also an hour and a half from Kobe, where we docked. I could reel off example after example from so many of my cruises. So whenever the city or the sites that I want to see are a distance away, I stick with the cruise line tours to basically remove the stress and the hassle of getting there and particularly worrying about getting back in time. However, mostly I book there on your own tours because that is a transfer there. It normally has a guide en route who will brief me on what to see, how to get around. They'll give me a contact number to call them on if I get lost or stuck. There's also a meeting point. Uh, for the transfer back. But even if the distance issue for booking a cruise line excursion does not convince you, the next one is very practical and it can significantly increase your time to explore in a port. There are two times I found that taking a cruise line excursion has made getting out and into the port for me easier and faster. First of all, sometimes a cruise line excursion has helped me skip the hassle of getting a visa, or it's meant getting through immigration faster than those people that are not on tours. Now, my best example of that that I could think of is not actually applicable right now because cruise lines have put going there on hold. But when I went to St. Petersburg, Russia on Silver Sea Silver Whisper, by going on their cruise line excursion, I didn't have to go to the cost and the hassle of getting a Russian visa to allow me to get off the ship. Those people self-touring, they'd had to go to all the planning and organization of getting a visa in advance. Now, on some cruises that call on multiple countries, sometimes the authorities do require passengers to go through immigration. So on Queen Mary 2, I was doing a trip through Asia, and we had to do that in Singapore. The tours all had priority, and we actually got off first. But friends who were self-touring found they were delayed many hours getting off the ship by the queues as they basically processed all the excursion people. So now I check whether getting a visa or getting through immigration checks is going to make going on a cruise line tour worth it. Now, the other time a cruise line tour also speeds things up is in a tender port. This is where we have to get the tender boats off the ship to get into the port. Now, on large ships, especially like when I was on Celebrity Edge on a Mediterranean cruise last year, I found it could take many hours to get a tender because, the, again, the cruise line excursions went first, then those in premium cabins went next, and then everybody else had to get a ticket and wait for a tender to be called. So a cruise line excursion is a good way of getting around all of that. However, there is another consideration, of course, that trumps all of these reasons for doing a cruise line excursion. And that is, frankly, when it is the only option available to me. So for example, when I went to Antarctica, we could only go on land with the cruise line. The same was true also when I went to Galapagos. This last summer, I went to Greenland and the Canadian Arctic. And at most of the stops, we were only allowed to get off the ship on a cruise line excursion because of the threat of polar bears. You know, the area that we were going to had to be patrolled by armed polar bear guards off the ship. The other easy decision for doing a cruise line excursion is when they are included within the fare. So like on that Regent uh, Explorer Japan cruise that I mentioned earlier, included in my fare was a choice of excursions available. So as I paid for them effectively, I did them in each port that we went to. The same was true if you go on something like when I went on a Viking Ocean cruise from Venice to Athens. Again, the excursions were included in the fare, so I always did one of those excursions. Most river cruise fares as well also include excursions. So when I went on a Viking Danube river cruise recently, I did the excursions because effectively I've paid for them. So check if any tours are going to be included uh, within your fare. It tends to be only a few lines that do it, and they do tend to be the premium ones. So that's a good way of just knowing, <laughs> as it were. 
When going on cruise line excursions, I see though several huge mistakes that cruisers make when actually going on them. So why don't you join me in this video where I explain what those blunders are, starting with something that many people do but should know way, way better. See you over there. 